can't tell you how many times I have picked up a book just because it had the word ghosts in the title. I'm a sucker for books that have to do with ghosts or hauntings or stuff in that vein. And so the book we're going to talk about today is called The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. And this is a historical fiction. Also, I would say it's fantasy because it's got like some weird liminal magical qualities to it. It takes place during 1917 and 1918 during World War One. I. I don't always do well with novels based in wartime. Sometimes they lose my interest. If it gets lost in like just monotonous historical details, I don't know, my brain just shuts off. But this one, it did take a little bit for me to get into it. And as the story builds, it follows this brother and sister, Freddie and Laura. And Laura is a nurse, and then Freddie had enlisted in the war. Laura ends up getting injured. So she's shipped back to Canada. She goes back home. Something happens where there's this big explosion from the ship in the harbor. It's right by where her house is. And this ends up killing her father and her mother. And then she gets this box shortly thereafter with her brother's stuff in it saying he's missing and they just presume he's dead and she's working for these ladies and she's staying at their house they're like these kind of eccentric sisters and they have seances and whatnot she meets this woman who she runs into in the hallway when the ladies that she lives with are having a seance and she gets drugged into the seance and the one lady, she was trying to contact her son who had passed away and been killed in the war. And this message ends up coming through that's like, I'm dead, but Freddie is not dead. Freddie's still alive, saying like her brother's still alive. And she doesn't believe in any of this stuff. So she's like, like runs out of there and is like, what the heck? She starts writing letters to people that she knew over there in the war. And everyone's kind of like, yeah, he's dead. He missing this that and the other but then she gets this one mysterious letter from this nurse that she used to work with it seems like she's unable to say stuff because at that time the military would check the letters and stuff and if you've read the synopsis of the book you know that he is alive <laughs> she just doesn't know this and so you flip to freddy and freddy was in a battle and wakes up he is in this flipped over upside down pillbox which is this big cement thing that housed like i don't know if it housed like artillery like heavy artillery guns or whatever it was but it flipped over and he's stuck in there and he's in the dark and he discovers he's in there with this german man named hans winter they're basically just laying there kind of waiting to die because they figure the air is gonna run out they're gonna die and so they talk a little bit and they're kind of and freddy's like should we just try to kill each other and end this or whatever and then they end up not doing that suddenly there's like rats under there and the German guy is like, if there's rats, that means somehow they're getting in. And they decide they want to live and they eventually dig their way out of there. And so when you go through something like that with someone and it does not matter if it's your enemy on the other side, you guys are no longer enemies. So they get out, but no one knows they're alive and they can't really, you know, talk out loud or go anywhere because if anyone hears the guy speak German or if the guy's speaking English, they don't know where they are. They don't know who's going to take who a prisoner and all that stuff. So they're just trying to survive and get the heck out. But as I said, Laura is getting these mixed messages about maybe her brother being alive. So she decides to go back over uh, where the war is. She gets back there and they hear these curious stories of someone called the Fiddler. Who, rumor has it, serve you wine that takes away your pain and these horrible memories and atrocities that everyone's experiencing kind of like takes you away for a moment in time. People who meet this fiddler spend the rest of their lives trying to find him again because once you meet him, you meet him once. Like this weird mythical creature or person or something of that sort. He doesn't take payment and money, payment other ways. And unfortunately, Freddy and Winter cross this person or entity's path, what the Fiddler may offer is something that Freddy is willing to pay that price. Once he goes off, maybe with this Fiddler, to a liminal place that kind of exists between the worlds or something of that sort, it's going to be real hard for his sister to find him. 
such an intense and weird and strange and emotional and liminal story and it's so gut-wrenching and heartfelt really loved it. it did take me a little bit to get into it but once i got like into the story that was being woven it's so good and it's so freaking beautiful and just sad there's so much to it it was absolutely fantastic i would definitely be interested to read other books by this author because i absolutely loved it if you're a fan of books that have strange liminal qualities or hauntings in them the next video coming up will be about that so stick around check it out and if you on hanging out today hit that subscribe button come back see me again and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff